You're at the cutting edge of cardiovascular sciences. I'm your host, John Cook. I'm professor and chair of the Department of Cardiovascular Sciences here at Houston Methodist. And my host today is Dr. James Martin from across the street at Baylor. Uh, he's professor and vice chairman of molecular physiology and biophysics at the Baylor College of Medicine, where he's also the Vivian Smith Chair in Regenerative Medicine. His MD, PhD in clinical training was here in the Texas Medical Center at University of Texas. Um, he has many honors, uh, including a National Academy of Inventors Fellowship Fellow. Uh, Dr. Martin has studied the development of the heart and what that tells us about its regeneration in the adult. And he's focused in this regard on the HIPPO, WINT, and BMP signaling pathways in cardiac development. They have a role in regeneration. We're going to be hearing about that today and how manipulations of these pathways might lead to new therapeutic approaches for cardiovascular diseases. Thanks for joining us, James. Thanks for having me, John. It's great to be here. Well, um, this work that you've been doing uh, in the Texas Medical Center uh, started about 30 years ago with your medical training. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Tell us uh, what you've seen in the 30 years you've been here in the Texas Medical Center. What's, what's the same? What's changed? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, the TMC is still a, an incredible place to, uh, uh, to do science. Uh, such a massive uh, density of health professionals and scientists, mm -hmm. and it's really a land of opportunity, mm -hmm. you know, honestly. And uh, I think that's continued over the years. Um, it's, it's gotten a lot bigger and better mm -hmm. over the years. I mean, uh, a lot of beautiful buildings and all the uh, influx of more and more science and, uh, and uh, in, you know, interesting technologies and just everything is bigger in Texas, that's for sure. <laughs> well, it is incredible. Over 100,000 people come oh, yeah. to work here every day. Yeah. Yeah. And, and now they are coming back uh, with the pandemic subsiding. Finally, the, uh, we're actually meaning more in, in person to person, which is nice. Right. Uh, and uh, so um, how, how did uh, your laboratory fare during the pandemic and, and uh, Yeah, I mean, we did, that? we did, uh, we managed to, it was, it was, there were some challenges, of course, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, but overall, I, you know, I think everything was managed, everything was managed very well at Baylor and uh, they certainly looked out for the investigators, mm -hmm. try to help us, you know, get through all these uh, difficult times. Right. And yeah, we avoided any any super spreader events in the lab and mm -hmm. anything anything like that. So yeah, I think we got we got lucky. You know, it was for f I think for you and, and and for us as well. It was it was uh, we really had to uh, row together, right? The the scientists mm. and the clinicians. We all had a role to play in the pandemic. And uh, we learned a lot, I think. We made some mistakes early on, but we learned an awful lot uh, going forward. I think we can be proud of what we did a as a Texas Medical Center uh, during mm. the pandemic. But it is nice to see the light at the end of the tunnel and, and thing see things subsiding and oh, yeah. getting back to our usual activities. And uh, this is the first time I've had yeah. someone in the studio with me since the pandemic started. So welcome. I uh, feel honored. <laughs> it's great to see you. It's <laughs> yeah. really great to see you. I, I am looking forward to hearing your talk today because I, you know, I, I tell my uh, scientists, uh, Jim, that uh, what I want them to do is, is to uh, really generate fundamental insights, to do the best science, rigorous, reproducible science, publish in the best journals. Uh, we want to do that. And we want to translate those mm -hmm. insights into something useful. And you, you are you an excellent example of that. We're going to be hearing about your work uh, in cardiac development and how you've applied that to uh, regeneration of the heart in the adult. And you started a company based on, on the work that you've done. Tell us a little bit about that. The company is um, early stage, very early stage um, biotech called Yap Therapeutics. Mm -hmm. uh, it's located here in the in the TMC, uh, in, you know, uh, Innovation Center, um, and it's the TMC Accelerator. Accelerator. It's, a, it's yeah. an incubator, I yeah, guess. Yeah, the incubator, right? Yeah. Uh, Is that does that help your small company? Oh, for to sure. Get going? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The facilities over there are quite nice, and uh, and it's helping tremendously. Mm -hmm. We're just getting started, yeah. you know. 
That's great. Yeah. Well, uh, that's wonderful, Jim. I'm looking forward now to hearing about the science that uh, underlays, that provides the foundation sure. for your work. So yep. uh, we're going to hear now about hippo signaling in heart regeneration, Dr. James Martin. Okay. Well, thanks, John. I, I will tell you uh, I'll, I'm going to be focusing on the hippo pathway, not mm -hmm. so much WINT and BMP, although obviously key pathways. So yeah, I mean, this is the, you know, just from a 30,000 uh, foot uh, viewpoint, what is the main problem? The problem is why is it that cardiomyocytes or the heart, heart muscle cells cannot regenerate after a uh, myocardial infarction or a heart attack? And that's what this netter, this netter image is just, uh, to, you know, to illustrate uh, a man has a heart attack, massive loss of cardiomyocytes, and instead of those cardiomyocytes regenerating or renewing, mm -hmm. you, know, you get scarring, as we all know, and this results uh, if it's bad enough in heart failure. You know what I like about this Netter? I mean, that Netter was always in his medical illustrations. He showed the personality of the, yeah. the figures, <laughs> right? right? I think he, was, he was such a, yeah. he's such a spectacular artist. And uh, what you see in this, this painting are all, all of the things that can right. trigger food, engina, right? He's coming out of a restaurant, it's, it's of cold. Restaurant. He's coming up the steps, yeah. He's carrying something in yeah, his hands exactly. to make it a little bit harder. Right. And he's dropped a cigarette <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> so all of the things that might uh, precipitate yeah. angina are yeah. in that. Is There's in a that, lot in uh, that, yeah, yeah, I agree, yeah. Sorry, I just had No, 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 of course, that. please. And, you know, I probably don't need to, to say this, but, you know, heart failure, of course, is leading cause of death. And um, a million heart attacks and Different, many, many, many Americans are in different various stages of heart failure, and um, you know there are there are medical therapies, but I would say that um, we can do better. Uh, hopefully, we can do better, um, and that's really the point of this slide. I don't really need to dwell on that. You know, there are some mammal, uh, not mammals, but some vertebrates that do regenerate the heart, and I guess the most famous one is is the zebrafish. Um, it's been shown now more than, you know, back in the early 2000s by Ken Poss uh, that if you amputate the zebrafish heart, 20%, you can just basically chop off 20% of the zebrafish heart and wait uh, about, you know, 30 days, then you can see that this, the zebrafish heart regenerates. So, you know, this is, this is important. Why is it important? Because it, it kind of it gives you a goal, right? I mean, it's a vertebrate, it regenerates the heart. So for people doing these type of experiments in mammals, um, you know, the basic idea is, well, can we make the, ma the mouse or the mammal more like a zebrafish? And so there, this, was a, this was an important finding um, many years ago now. So, you know, humans and, and, and mammals in general don't regenerate the heart. Um, and wh why is that? Well, you know, one reason is that the cardiomyocytes just don't proliferate very well. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's uh, shown on this slide. Mm -hmm. And there was a very, very uh, influential study from a group at the Karolinska where they did uh, something called retrospective carbon-14 dating. Yeah. And what they did was, uh, was, was very clever. So they looked at post-mortem samples for people who had been alive uh, during the, uh, the nuclear test, the atmospheric nuclear yeah. test during the Cold War. Mm -hmm. And you know, during those years, carbon-14 levels in the atmosphere were elevated. And so uh, it gets into the, into the food chain and then basically it labels our DNA. So everybody who's, who, who is alive in those years has, has elevated levels of carbon-14 to mm -hmm. the sort of to the endogenous uh, uh, carbon isotope. So what they did uh, uh, was they, they looked at these post-mortem samples and then they, made, they, 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 uh, they studied the, uh, the ratio of carbon isotopes in the cardiomyocytes. Mm -hmm. And then you know, putting everything together, they were able to make um, estimates for cardiomyocyte renewal. So how, how often does a human cardiomyocyte turn over or how often is a new cardiomyocyte born postnatally? And uh, it's low, as you might expect, right? Mm -hmm. So it's 1% per year when you're young. Mm -hmm. So if you're a 20 year old, you don't get much cardiomyocyte renewal. And it gets, it gets even worse and the clinicians I'm sure uh, will recognize that uh, heart failure in older people, you know, is a, it, it, it's a big problem. And the re one reason for that is because cardiomyocyte renewal, one likely reason for that is cardiomyocyte renewal already at a low rate when you're young is now even lower. It's yeah. about half of that. You know, so the idea, one of the ideas is, well, how, what can we do to try to make cardiomyocytes 
more renewable. And mm -hmm. maybe I'm anticipating something you're going to tell us about, but um, and, and you mentioned that uh, uh, when we're younger, we can generate more cardiomyocytes than when we're older. No, we're not generating much. Like you right. said 1% per right. year. My, my understanding is that in um, mice, in neonatal mice, uh, there's also some regenerative capacity mm -hmm. too. So uh, even in mammals, there's, there's uh, some regenerative capacity. What about, what about um, uh, when children are operated on uh, in utero? Um, my, my understanding is that they have tremendous regenerative capacity uh, well, certainly, yeah, you get scarless, uh, uh, you get scarless wound healing in, right. in that context, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, uh, I think the issue of the, uh, the, the capacity of the, of the neonatal uh, mice, and also there's the evidence that neonatal humans also have that regenerative capacity. It's right. anecdotal, of course. Right. It's children that had these... Uh, congenital anomalies of the coronary arteries. Mm -hmm. And so basically uh, they, they have large infarcts, rarely on mm -hmm. occasion. Um, and there's some very, very uh, well studied uh, case reports uh, mm -hmm. showing that these, these, these infants uh, did have a very large loss of cardiomyocytes and, uh, and, uh, cardio and, and heart function put on ECMO and then, you know, a few weeks later, they can walk out of the hospital, or not walk out, but, you know, they'd be taken out of the hospital. Right, right. Yeah, so there's, right. Def there's definitely evidence in humans as well that that, that, that uh, exists. That regeneration is possible. Yeah, as long as you're in the right uh, time frame. So right. you, have to be, you have to be young. Like in the mice, it's, it's in P well, one day after birth to, P to six days after birth. Mm -hmm. And then you mm -hmm. lose it very quickly at, yeah. that, at that transition point. And so I guess understanding what, what the mechanisms of that regeneration are uh, mm -hmm. early in, in the early oh, yeah. stages of mammalian development. If, if you can understand that, we could apply that to adults potentially. Well, that's been an area, of, a very f uh, big area of focus in the field, for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, using that, that area, uh, that window of regeneration, and then try to, you know, try to extend it or try to learn things from that to use in the adult. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure, absolutely. Yeah, it's been, ex it's been exciting. I think that those have been uh, approaches which are very useful. So, I mean, basically, you know, just to think about this in a very simple way, are there genetic reasons or there are there g genetic pathways that are inhibitory that prevent cardiomyocyte renewal? Mm -hmm. You know, it also could be possible that something is missing, <laughs> but it could also be possible that there's an inhi an inhibitory. And so right. what we discovered is that it is an inhibitory pathway. So mm -hmm. that's really what I'll, I'll talk about. And then, you know, and then can we manipulate that inhibitory pathway in a beneficial way? And we, you know, we've been taking the, we've taken the approach uh, of using gene therapy. Mm -hmm. it, it, AAV mediated gene therapy, which mm -hmm. is a very, you know, another exciting and active area uh, throughout the world. You know, the, these uh, adeno-associated viruses. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the whole story, as you mentioned, uh, uh, starts out in development, but it even goes farther back. The, the, the HIPPO pathway is, uh, is an organ-sized control pathway, which is discovered in Drosophila. Mm -hmm. You know, as many of the great discoveries uh, have been made in, uh, in, in the fly, you know, mm -hmm. very simply and very true. And a hippo was one of them. So if, if you know, in screens, you, they uh, many investigators uh, pulled out different genes in the pathway and, uh, you know, with loss of function, you get a big head and a big thorax, which is shown right there on the right mm -hmm. in that hippo mutant uh, fly. The hippo pathway, uh, the fly is on the left. It's a, it's a kinase cascade. So there's a core com component, uh, a core group of, of proteins, which are shown there in the middle. I don't know, do I have a, oh yeah, I do, okay. These, these are the core components right here, uh, hippo, hippo kinase, as well as uh, uh, warts and some other genes here that are adapter molecules. Um, you know, the, the pathway is complicated and uh, it actually gives us quite a, quite a few targets uh, to look at to try to manipulate the pathway. So, um, you know, that's actually a good thing. Um, you know, there's, this is the mammalian pathway. The mammalian pathway looks very similar to the fly pathway. It's a, it's a kinase cascade, which is activated by events which are happening outside the cell. Physiologic inputs come into the cell through d different types of receptors. They activate the kinases. And then those kinases phosphorylate a, a, a factor, which is downstream, the downstream effector. And the most famous is a molecule called YAP. I mean, YAP is being extensively studied all over the world. When the kinases are active, you know, YAP is excluded from the nucleus. When the kinases are low, 
then YAP can move into the nucleus and it's a transcriptional cofactor. Basically, it's a very strong signal that drives proliferation of a cell. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just to think about it, since we're not really going to go deeply into this, it, the very simple way to think about this is that the HIPPO pathway, the kinase cascade, is a stop signal. Mm -hmm. it, it receives signals from outside the cell. One of those classical signals is cells in a high density environment, shown mm -hmm. right here. That turns up the stop signal. And, and, and it tells all those cells that are in a high dense, this high dense environment to stop proliferating. You know, so we, we knew this, uh, this was, this is, these are concepts that come out of the fly work. Mm -hmm. And so we, you know, we started looking at this for various reasons uh, uh, in the context of, uh, you know, of mammalian development now. Can I you ask know. you a question about that? Yeah, sure, uh, please. The, so what are the signals that the HIPPO pathway is, uh, uh, is receiving? Is it contact with other cells? Is it some paracrine substance yeah. that's being released? Right. What, I would say, yeah, I think those are good points. I mean, that's a, you know, if we can understand what those physiologic inputs are, then we can try to manipulate the pathway. Uh, you know, the matrix density and the, con and the characteristics of the matrix, the mm -hmm. extracellular matrix, that's very well well uh, defined now that there are, there are components, like you were mentioning the neonatal mm -hmm. heart. The matrix of the neonatal heart is different from the matrix of the adult heart. And there are specific components of the neonatal heart uh, extracellular matrix, and in particular a molecule called agarin. Hmm. And agarin is not there in the adult extracellular matrix. And agarin actually is very important for that neonatal cardiomyocyte. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, regenerative capacity. So agarin fits right into the HIPPO pathway. Interesting. Cells are very sensitive to the matrix. That absolutely, in. absolutely. Yeah. The, the 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 not the, the you know the 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 characteristics. So is agarin there? Is it not there? But also, you know the, how stiff it is and things like that. These yeah. are all these are all very important regulators of HIPPO and YAP. Just a little uh, segue. The, the uh, Helen Blau had a was actually the first author was Penny Gilbert, a science paper. Uh, I don't know about. 12 years ago or so, um, they solved a problem that, uh, and you may know this, the, the muscle uh, stem cell physiologists were having, that it was very difficult to grow muscle stem cells mm. in, in culture. Mm. And because um, they were growing them, it turns out, on a rigid, matrix. on a rigid, on, rigid. on, on plastic. And, yeah. and uh, when uh, Penny Gilbert started growing them on hydrogel, uh, they maintained their stem cell mm. properties. Oh, okay. So the ability for stem cell renewal, at least muscle stem cell renewal, is highly dependent upon the rigidity of the matrix. Uh, so supporting what you just said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that, yeah, I think that that is sort of, it's a fundamental aspect of certainly, of, you know, this system for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so yeah, we, you know, just going back a little bit in history now, this is a, one of our first studies that we published back in 2011, just like in the fly, in a developing heart, you can, the HIPPO pathway, the stop signal, if you take the stop signal away in a developing cardiomyocyte, mm -hmm. you get a big heart. Mm -hmm. So uh, just on the left is the control, and on the right is the HIPPO mutant, where again, we've taken away the stop signal, and you c it's about fourfold, uh, two and a half fold larger than the control. There's a number of interesting things in this, at least to my eye. You know, you can see that uh, the patterning is still there. It's yeah. not like you get a big tumor. It, you know, you, you can still recognize a very well-defined heart, but, right. but uh, you know, it's, it's bigger. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's just like uh, it, this particular function of the HIPPO pathway is conserved all the way from flies into, hmm. into mice and most likely into humans. But, of course, we will probably never know that in humans. But, yeah. uh, you know, this is, so this, was, this is quite interesting. Very interesting. Is, yeah. that, is that larger heart functional? It, it is. I mean, it gets too big. You know, the, it fills, kind of fills the mediastinal cavity of the mouse, and then, mm -hmm. and then eventually, uh, eventually it, it'll kill the mice. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. It's too big. Yeah. Right. But that's you know that's that's when you inactivate it in development. It's it, when we inactivate the pathway in the adult, it's uh, it's not the same. It's it's um, the, there are other regulatory mechanisms which are working in parallel mm -hmm. to the hippo pathway. You know this uh, pig heart transplant that occurred. I saw that. Yeah. 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 Uh, one of the things that uh, they mentioned, and, and I haven't seen the, the 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 science behind it yet, but in the in the lay press, they said there was a gene that was knocked out to prevent the pig heart from growing. Yeah. I'm in, curious in what that human. was. Yeah. yeah. Do you, you yeah, don't no, know? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Probably hippo. Could be. Could <laughs> be a hippo hippo gene. Yeah. Hippo pathway.
So with this move, you know, we moved into into the adult just to, you know, we're more now we get became very interested now uh, in trying to understand is this involved in the inability of cardiomyocytes to renew. Mm -hmm. That you know that developmental study uh, really suggested to me that this would be. Uh, and as a physician scientist, you know, this is the kind of thing that I'm, I was kind of I was I've all, you always look for these type of things. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that yeah, I think that that uh, uh, so we. We did see, you know, we'd started doing some studies in humans to try to understand what the hippo pathway, uh, if it was involved in the humans. And we did find actually that hippo pathway was upregulated in, in humans with heart failure. These are, hmm. these are patients with end stage heart failure. Uh, and it's about threefold increase. A simple way to look at hippo pathway activity is just to look at phosphorylation. Again, the, it's a kinase cascade phosphorylate gap. So yeah, um, and, it, uh, and so that, that kind of, was interesting to us in that we followed up with that, uh, turning back to a mouse study. And what we did in this study was to basically ma make a mouse model of heart failure by infarcting uh, mice. Uh, let's see. Yeah, okay, so we gave mice MIs at, at that time zero, and then we waited a period of time, mm -hmm. three weeks, to let the mice go into failure. And the nice thing about that also is we could, we could take mice out that didn't get a good uh, MI uh, out of the study, you know, it really made things very, uh, very rigorous and reproducible. Okay, and then we studied the mice at that three-week time point before we knocked out the hippo pathway, before we took away the stop signal, and we studied them for signs of heart failure, mm -hmm. weight gain, you know, pulmonary edema, mm -hmm. all those sort of things, to you know, to validate uh, that this was actually a reasonable model of, uh, of heart failure, because the, you know, as you know, the cardiologists have a very specific definition for heart failure. Mm -hmm. um, so we, you know, we did all that in the, in the mice, and, uh, then, and then in the mice that were in heart failure, and also we had many controls. We took away the stop signal at that, at that time point, and then we studied a longitudinal study, and we mm -hmm. followed the mice out for a, a, a number of weeks. And really, the, you know, the exciting result is shown right here. So you, here's, the, here's we infarcted the mice, and then they go into heart failure. And then you, the hippo group, uh, over a period of six more weeks, would uh, increase their, uh, their pumping function uh, up to the, you know, similar to the uh, unoperated uh, sham mice. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think- How excited it, were you when you saw yeah, that? Yeah, this was cool. This was yeah. cool. This was very interesting, uh, happy days for us. You know, the, the, uh, you know, the picture tells it is worth a thousand words, I guess. So here you can see that the, at that last time point, you can see that these are controls that look pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, you know, they've gone through a lot of pathologic remodeling a, at this a point. A lot of thinning of the yeah. myocardial wall. That's right, yeah. And, uh, you know, the Salvador, this is one of the genes in the pathway is Salvador, uh, which is one of, the, one of our target genes. Uh, when you take away Salvador, again, you know, reducing the hippo pathway, reducing that stop signal, you can see that that middle group is, uh, is, uh, is the most common uh, type of heart that we saw. There's a lot more muscle in the free wall of the left ventricle, and the, the fibrosis is quite different. And That's incredible. Yeah, That's it was an incredible a, it, result. It's an interesting result. We're following up on this now to try to understand. There's a lot of things happening in that microenvironment of yeah. surrounding the cardiomyocytes. You know what? Um, I'm just going to stop you for a minute just to remind our, our listeners that they can join us by web. They can ask questions during the talk. It's, Jim said he, it would be fine if uh, we asked him questions during the talk. And there's two ways you can do that. Um, you, on your phone, uh, you can um, dial 37607 and text DeBakey. So text DeBakey, D-E-B-A-K-E-Y, to 37607. Text in your message. Uh, or uh, you can go uh, to pollev.com, enter DeBakey, and respond to that activity. So those are the two ways you can ask uh, questions. Um, so, uh, yeah, please, please uh, feel free to uh, interrupt us with your questions. Go Terrific. ahead. Terrific. Terrific. Thanks, John. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, there's just, there's a, this actually, the way we think about this is that it's a, you know, it's a microenvironment. You, you have these cardiomyocytes w where we've, we've inactivated one of the genes in the pathway. We've reduced the stop signal in those cardiomyocytes. And now these cardiomyocytes, they do proliferate, but, and they also signal. Hmm to surrounding cells. And we, in this study, we showed that there were more endothelial cells surrounding those cardiomyocytes. So there's a new capillary network wow. that's induced. Wow. That's, that's yeah, there's a lot of interesting things that are, are going on. And 
Uh, in addition to you know the the, the, the fibroblasts are mm -hmm. are quite different. Now, um, are the myocytes uh, triggered by the hippo pathway? Are they making angiogenic cytokines to induce angiogenesis or? Yeah, they do. They make a lot of different things, right? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. As as well as uh, many of the targets for YAP, which which uh, you know YAP would be active in those cardiomyocytes, uh, are uh, factors. Um, which are you know, they make chemokines and cytokines mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. and many different sort of fundamental uh, factors involved in angiogenesis okay. for sure. Yeah, they're direct targets. <coughs> yeah. You know, one of the things that we we get asked quite a bit is you know is it is it bad to take away this, the hippo pathway? The stop signal is there for a reason. So when you do this, is it uh, you know does it keep growing or is it self limiting? Mm -hmm. Does it stop? Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it it does stop. It's it is self-limiting. We have uh, some other data I could show b briefly, but I think this really makes the point. So this is the same study where we infarct the mice, wait three weeks, and now in this case we're following it out out for a period of 17 weeks, a little bit longer of a follow-up. Mm -hmm. And you could see that the controls start to drop off with as they remodel more, but the uh, Salvador knockouts, we really don't see any changes. So it does become stable. Were, were, Jim, were these young mice or middle-aged dice or old, older mice? Uh, these are, yeah, these are approximately two-month-old, so they're not that old. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they're adult for sure. Um, but they're, they're younger adults. They're so. younger adults, right, yeah. Okay. Those are studies that, those are quite important studies, and you bring up a, a very important point because the patients that we are going to be thinking about are older. It's mm -hmm. an older human population, mm -hmm. right, that's in heart failure. So we are, we're looking at that very carefully now. Mm -hmm. what, we know what happens. You know, I would say the preliminary evidence would say that they, it, it, it's for the most part, it's very similar. There are some subtle differences that, we, that we're uncovering and mostly, um, as you might expect, in the old heart. Yeah. There, okay. are, there are some differences, yeah. Thanks. Yep. Uh, you know, I, as we mentioned and we've talked about, we'd like to, we want to translate these things. We don't want to be we don't want to be mouse doctors necessarily. Obviously, the mouse is a, you know, is an incredibly valuable uh, model system. Uh, but we'd like eventually to take, what, you know, what we're doing into into the patients who need mm -hmm. need more options. You know, heart failure patients. Many don't have the options that uh, would be op optimal. So, so we made a gene therapy, and in this case, what we did was we. Uh, it's an adeno-associated virus uh, using a capsid that is tropic for uh, muscle. Uh, it, it hits uh, cardiomyocytes pretty mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. uh, and what we did was we introduced, uh, we have a cardiac troponin T promoter in the, in the uh, transgene that's uh, carried by the, uh, the virus, as well as uh, we put a GFP in this case, as well as some shRNAs against uh, one of the genes in the HIPPO pathway. Again, the basic idea is we're knocking down the, the stop signal. Um, and in these first studies in mice, what we did was we, we infarcted the mice and then we injected directly around the uh, ischemic area as well as did some systemic injections and showed that it worked, which I'm not going to show you, but we did then take this into the pig and did this translational study with my, you know, my colleagues at Texas Heart mm -hmm. who, you know, who are really expert at, uh, at these methods of introducing, uh, uh, introducing uh, genes and uh, cells uh, directly into the heart using this catheter-mediated uh, approach going in through the, you know, the typical cardio interventional cardiologist ephemeral mm -hmm. approach, thread it up into the heart, and using uh, electromechanical mapping, you can, you can map out the border zone of, the, of an infarct. And what we did was use the same virus that we did in the mice, exact same virus, and, uh, and thread, threaded a cat catheter up into the pig and uh, delivered the virus directly into the heart. Mm -hmm. A couple of important things there is it allows us to use a lot less virus. Mm -hmm. Right, so you know, making viruses expensive and difficult, um, and so this this uh, this is a very bit beneficial in that sense. It also allows us to be more specific. Mm -hmm. We don't have to worry about you know hitting other organs and things like that quite as much. Mm -hmm. So safety, right? Mm -hmm. So so that's why we w one reason we chose that, and then that on the right hand, we that those are just what we think uh, that you know based on all of our studies, we think that what happens is you, you know, you you have the cardiomyocyte, mm -hmm. we knock down the hippo pathway. It causes them to revert back uh, to more of a fetal-like mm -hmm, uh, cardiomyocyte mm -hmm, mm -hmm. cell state mm -hmm. that allows them to proliferate, and then they uh, and then they integrate, and then they can redifferentiate. Mm -hmm. There's quite a few things in that in that 
whole cascade of things that we understand, but there's also you know, quite a, a few things that we don't quite understand that we're working on very hard on at the moment. But that, you know, that's the basic hypothesis shown right there. And, and you know, this was the model, so the pigs, and then as I mentioned, we thread the catheter up directly into the heart via a subendocardial mm -hmm. uh, approach and do the electro uh, electromechanical mapping and uh, via NOGA catheter in this case. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and my cal collaborators are shown right down there at the bottom, Emerson Perrin, Jim Willerson, and Kay Lee at uh, Texas Heart. Uh, and then, yeah, so basically uh, that was the, uh, that's the study. Uh, we did show, you know, some qu sort of quality control. We had, a, we had a GFP in in the virus, so we were, you know, we can, we can follow the cardiomyocytes or see the cardiomyocytes that had become infected. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, you can see all these GFP positive cardiomyocytes. Right. And then the other thing we look at is when you knock out the hippo path or knock down the stop signal, you know, YAP should become uh, nuclear. Just mm -hmm. a simple readout. I, right. I didn't really get into that, but that, that's how the hippo pathway works. You knock down the kinases and then YAP will become nuclear. Sure. So we can see that just on these simple immunofluorescence experiments. And this is, this is just, these are kind of the things that we just use for quality control. Yes, but there, I can't see that histogram on the, what is that? What are you showing us there on the histogram? That's a uh, nuclear YAP. Yeah. That's nuclear YAP. Yeah. So okay. on the left is the control virus, uh, which was a, a GFP containing virus. And on the right, is this the, uh, the the Salvador knockdown, the Hippo pathway knockdown, and mm -hmm. and the, and what we're counting there is the percentage of cardiomyocytes that have nuclear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's kind of clear clear increase in yeah. nuclear. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. This is kind of busy, but I I guess I'll just point out two parts of this. Okay. If you focus on A. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is the overall s study. So we infarcted pigs here by uh, ischemia reperfusion. Right. Blow up a balloon in the artery, the main artery of the heart. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we wait two weeks, uh, similar to the, to the mice. Uh, in this case, we waited two weeks. Um, and then at that two-week time point, we make sure that the pigs had a, a good infarct. Mm -hmm. And then we, if they do, then we, we deliver the virus at that you point. You did uh, an echo or something? Echo, there's echocardiography, mm -hmm. correct, yeah, that's right. Uh, and then we follow them out for a period of three months, and we do a lot of different studies over that time period. The same basic idea for what we did in the mice. Okay, so you can ignore the rest of this stuff, but if you focus on panel E, go down right there, mm -hmm. uh, you could see that this is the, uh, these are the change in ejection fraction. And this one group right here, sorry about that, I guess I... Uh, it's hard to see, but I'll just, if you could see my, po uh, my uh, sure. pointer right there, these are the controls. Pigs uh, remodel, uh, pathologic remodeling is a little bit more robust than what you would see in a mouse. They don't have a lot of collateralization. Um, uh, and that's a change in ejection fraction? Yeah, exactly, right. Mm -hmm. And then you can see that these are two different different doses of the uh, Salvador knockdown, the hippo mm -hmm. pathway knockdown. This is a low dose and this is the higher dose. Mm -hmm. And wow. we, do, we do see an increase, uh, you know, pretty substantial, yeah. significant in increase com compared to this over this. And even if we compare the high dose over the, uh, the, uh, the initial time point, we do see, uh, you know, we do, s uh, not just comparing to the control, but comparing to that time zero, we do see a statistically incre uh, uh, in increase in ejection fraction. The basic number is 14%. So we see an increase of 14%. That's, that's, yeah. that's remarkable. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, and, and it's very promising considering the pig heart is an awful lot like the human heart. Correct. Yeah. Uh, very, very clear, very yeah. nice uh, data. It, looked like you, it looks like you have, what, about a 30% decline after in the ejection fraction after the heart attack when you start to give the... That's about right. At uh, two weeks. That's right, yeah. When you start to give the uh, uh, virus and then... Uh, those animals that get the, the viral treatment, uh, the AAV treatment, their ejection fraction is improving, mm -hmm. whereas the animals that get placebo, they continue to decline. Correct, yeah. Yeah. You know, so there's a couple of things. I mean, I think um, uh, clearly we've stopped, or not stopped, but we have changed trajectory. We've, uh, we've certainly inhibited pathologic remodeling, mm -hmm. which, uh, which I can, I'll show you on some slices on the next Next slide. Uh, we do have evidence that we've made the cardiomyocytes uh, divide mm -hmm. using different, uh, different markers. And mm -hmm. we also know that the cardiomyocyte division is self-limited, just similar, very similar to what we found in the pigs mm -hmm. using this, this, uh, you know, this very translational approach. Here's the evidence that, that we can actually see cardiomyocytes divide. 
the key point here is that when a cell, any cell divides, mm -hmm. there's a protein uh, called Aurora B, mm -hmm. which is very important for that cell division process. And when, a, when any cell divides, there's always a little bit of Aurora B left between those two cells that have just divided. And it's called the mid-body remnant. And if you can see that, then you can be you can feel very confident that those two cells have divided. And you could see, you could see uh, in this 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 cardiomyocyte right here. Where is my? There it is. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah. right here. Okay, this guy. That's uh, that's a, those are two cardiomyocytes, and then the arrow is on the aurora B. Nice. Yeah, and so you could see these uh, that those cardiomyocytes actually look pretty pretty good you know they're pretty rectangular pretty well yeah. well formed the other ones are you know are, are not as well formed so the uh, they, they're definitely cardiomyocytes we can see that but they they have a little they're bit immature they look like they're a little bit more immature yeah and and uh, it'd be interesting to know if those same cardiomyocytes will you know ultimately would mature correct yeah that's, that's right. going to be important obviously for their contractile mm -hmm. function yep that's right yep yep that's right this is, a, you know, I, the way we think about this is it's kind of the, you know, the first shot across the bow. This sure. is the first. We have our foot in the door now. Yeah, yeah, it's you very know, there's, exciting. There's a bunch. Of, and then with this idea that they're self-limiting, if you look at this time point at 45 days post-MI, we do see quite a bit of the mid-body aurora B. But it, uh, at the, at the 104-day time point, it's almost all gone, which is wow. shown. That's what's yeah, shown I see right that. here. I yeah. see that. Yeah. Um, Here's another thing. When, when you, I, I can imagine when you, if you have, I'm seeing these immature cardiomyocytes uh, behind me. Uh, do you have arrhythmias? And you might think that immature cardiomyocytes might be more prone to yes arrhythm, yeah, arrhythmias. We, we actually have submitted a paper recently showing, we went back and looked at that question. We put telemetry devices into the pigs, uh -huh. repeated the experiment, and we can show that the arrhythmias actually are shut down more quickly in the Salvador knockout as compared to the, so, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, right, so, uh, uh-huh, yep. Interesting. Yep. It's spectacular, it's a really uh, spectacular results. All right, what's next? These are the s slices through the, uh, uh, th through the uh, hearts, so you can see these are the controls. Uh, mm -hmm. Right here, they have a nice scar. Mm -hmm. And in the Salvador, uh, knockdowns, uh, uh, the scar is less, uh, and uh, and basically uh, remodeling has been uh, has been improved quite quite significantly if you, if you if you measure scar area. Nice, about twelve. Yeah, that's very clear. Percent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that those are the I think those are really the bottom the bottom line. Uh, you know, the one more thing I thought I would show is, you know, you can measure uh, endothelial cells, the microvasculature. Mm -hmm. uh, Using different markers, and this is an, uh, something called isolectin B4. Mm -hmm. and it, you know, if you look in the in the control as as compared to the Salvador knockdown, that we do see, we do see more uh, more vessels uh, per unit area. And and uh, uh, what 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 part of the heart was that? Was that uh, peri infarct? This area? is peri infarct area, correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's where you were injecting the virus, mm -hmm. I guess, in the peri infarct area. You said you used a Noga catheter. The Noga catheter allows you to determine whether something is scar, whether something is hibernating myocardium, or whether it's uh, normal Definitely, myocardium. Yeah, that's right. So, so were you injecting into the hibernating myocardium or in the scar? Mm. Where, where were we you were injecting? not in the scar. Right. Yeah, we, we, we definitely don't want to be in the scar. Right. Yeah. So we are in the, uh, I would, you know, we, we're not quite in the hi hibernating. We're, we're, we, we like to be a little bit closer to the more Perfused. Uh, more perfused and happy myocardium, yeah. yeah. At least in these initial studies. Maybe yeah. at that border zone then? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Really nice. I mean, there's more to be done there. Yeah. You know, there's quite a bit more to be yeah, done. Very promising. Exciting. So where do you go to next after this? Have you gone to the FDA with a plan uh, for development? Uh, yeah, yeah. We've uh, we've been there, uh, you know, with the company has, mm -hmm. has interacted with the FDA, and there's a, they've uh, developed a preliminary plan. Right. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. Yep. So you know, we're, we're, you know, we're constantly thinking about safety and how to improve things and, uh, yeah. and uh, those sorts of practical sort of things that you have Very to do. Very exciting. You have a summary slide here on. Yeah, just, you know, just this is the way we think about things that there's, you know, if you want to think about what happens, that there are discrete events. We think that there is this element of sarcomere disassembly, mm -hmm. you know, which I, you, you know, we, I'm talking about it here as de-differentiation. And this is something that has to occur if the, if the cardiomyocyte is going to start to proliferate. 
there's going to have to be some. Yeah, that's right. The structural block has to be released a little bit. Right. right. So yeah, right. sarcomere breakdown. This okay. is one. You know, one of the characteristics of a cardiomyocyte is this mm -hmm. very, uh, you know, very well uh, and uh, rigid uh, cytoskeleton, yeah. as you know. So that has to be mod modified a little bit. And then, of course, you have to have a little bit of cardiomyocyte proliferation. There's an aspect of, uh, of inflammatory um, control here as mm -hmm. well, something that we're, we're uh, studying very carefully right now. And then, and then there are changes in the cardiomyocyte cell state. You mm -hmm. know, these cardiomyocytes have, they become more, I have, I'm pointing out the fact that they make protrusions, but the bottom line is that they become a little bit more fetal-like. Mm -hmm. And then we, we, you know, we know or we believe, uh, and we know as well as we can at this point that those cardiomyocytes do uh, redifferentiate to a certain extent. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, it's a big question. These are, as I pointed out, you know, we do have a very good handle on some things. Maybe, uh, you know, we're, we're still working on uh, understanding mm -hmm. in great depth these other areas. But I, you know, mm -hmm. these, these, uh, these are all, uh, you know, these are all, all therapeutic uh, uh, candidates, right? If you can understand some of these things, you can manipulate it and you can, you can try to things, make things even better. Yeah, absolutely. Very cool. Um, do you have a, oh, so you ha we have a question from uh, one of the listeners. Is the pig the best model uh, for what you're doing, Jim? Have there been any different models that yield, yield different results? Is the big, uh, pig the best model? I, th I think uh, the pig is the best model um, f for, for translation, I mean, right now, that's I would say that's mm -hmm. that's pretty well accepted. Yeah, I, th I think a pig heart is very similar to right. the human heart. Yeah. And in fact, we we were just talking earlier about the the pig heart that was transplanted. Correct. Uh, right. That's right. And yeah. uh, but um, and one one might argue, well, wh why not uh, primate, a uh, non-human primate, as a model? Uh, uh, you know, it's. It's a good model also. It's a lot more complicated. More uh, difficult to work it's with. Worth, it's very primates. difficult to work with, yeah. right. Uh, you know, and if we don't need it, then, uh, you know, I, I don't think we're, you know, why yeah. do and it? And the if FDA don't probably it? won't require you to use non-human mm, primates if you can show yeah. safety in, in a large animal model like the pig. Right, yeah. that's right, yeah. But uh, it was a good question. Yeah, it was a good um, question, yeah. Another, another question's coming up. Um, and maybe you could talk a little bit more. You've, you've, you have alluded to the regulators uh, of uh, HIPPO and uh, biological roles in pathway regulation. Maybe you can talk a little bit about that. You've, you've mentioned some of that already. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I think what, you know, the main, one of the b important biologic roles is uh, during development, of course, is organ size. Uh, we are, it, it, it's important for tissue homeostasis. Mm -hmm. um, we know in m many cells that if you if you take away the hippo pathway, that the cells will will fairly dramatically change their cell state and transition mm -hmm. into another uh, you know another cell type. For example, uh, fibroblasts. For example, the hippo pathway plays a very essential role in maintaining the resting state of a fibroblast. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're very you know mm -hmm. one of the reasons we went to gene therapy is because the hippo pathway has these very cell type specific. Uh, functions mm -hmm. in the cardiomyocyte. If you take it away, you can make the cardiomyocyte change cell state and and and, and divide. Uh, in a fibroblast, if you if you inactivate or take away part of the hippo pathway, that the fibroblast will will transition into a a, a myofibroblast type cell. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's very important in these uh, in, in in maintaining cell state in. Uh, just in homeostasis, mm -hmm. it's, it's always on in many cells. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we, we had uh, talked a little bit about w what uh, regulates HIPPO pathway, and uh, you mentioned the environment. Uh, we talked a little bit about the uh, matrix. Um, any paracrine cues that are affecting the HIPPO pathway? Any paracrine cues? Uh, you know, I mean, I think the, the, the YAP itself turns on all sorts of paracrine, paracrine pr pathways. Mm -hmm. So if you are in a low HIPPO environment, mm -hmm. you'll, turn, you'll see that YAP can activate lots of signaling factors, talk to many different cell types in the heart. Um, a major regulator is, uh, is, is, is the mechanical signaling also. Mechanical signaling also talks to the, to the HIPPO pathway. Yeah, right. you know, we've, we've done a little bit of work. Um, one of the 
Texas A&M medical students has done some, MD, PhD students has done some really nice work looking at the effects of shear stress on uh, mm -hmm. hippo and yap. So right. uh, uh, shear stress uh, tends to reduce yap activation mm -hmm. in the endothelial cells. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, whereas uh, senescence tends to activate it mm -hmm. um, and uh, we get uh, a lot of inflammatory cytokines being produced. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, th yeah, like you said, the, the uh, pathway does different things in different cell types. It's, yeah, yeah it, it really does, yeah. It's, uh, it's a pretty fundamental pathway. Mm -hmm. um, another question, how does the hippo pathway interface with other global signals that control organ size and compensatory proliferation? So fibroblast mm. growth factor, for example, um, you know, that, I don't know if that plays much of a role in cardiomyocyte. Uh, there is some evidence, yeah. I mean, there's a recent paper looking at FGF6, for example, mm -hmm. uh, and people are definitely looking in more into that now. Mm -hmm. um, I would say the best known pathways th that the hippo pathway interact with are the, are the wind pathway. Mm -hmm. Hippo and wind pathway are very closely mm -hmm. connected. Um, YAP, there's some evidence that YAP is actually in the destruction complex. Uh, which, you know, regulates stability of beta-catenin. And, and likewise, uh, TGF-beta and BMP signaling, YAP is interacts, a direct interactor with the linker and SMADs. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, there's very tight interaction um, between, in particular, those pathways. Notch also. Mm -hmm. oh. Notch is a direct target of YAP in many contexts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, it's fundamental. It pretty much interacts with most important signaling pathways. Mm -hmm. In various ways. One of the th processes that you were talking about that plays a role in cardiomyocyte proliferation, regeneration of the heart, inflammation you mentioned is, is one of the key. Mm -hmm. And and certainly uh, in inflammation, uh, in inflammatory cells play a role in, in uh, healing, uh, the, the M2 uh, monocyte, for example, mm -hmm. but also innate immune c cellular Sure. activation yeah. we, we've we've studied that uh, the um, pattern recognition receptors on on cells that recognize damage associated molecular patterns or pathogen associated molecular patterns that trips a pathway that uh, increases cellular plasticity also and may be involved in uh, the regeneration that you're seeing uh, is, yeah, it's very likely yeah, I agree yeah is is a uh, is the yap pathway how does the yap pathway uh, integrate with um, with uh, inflammatory pathways yeah, it's tightly, uh, you know, it's still something which is, um, which is, I would say, at the early stages of investigation. Uh, you know, YAP directly regulates um, molecules like IL-6, for example, hmm. you know, so sort of, again, these sort of these basic mm -hmm. uh, uh, factors which signal directly to and, and yep it increases IL six generation yeah so that would yep. uh, increase in, right. in an inflammatory response exactly right yeah um, the uh, someone's asking you to talk more about yap and TAS I think we're doing that um, and uh, what role does the pathway play in adult homeostasis abnormal growth I think you've been talking about mm -hmm. some of those things already but right. anything more that you'd like to uh, you know, I think um, anything more? Yeah, anything I'd like to we talk have, more. we've missed. I mean, I think it's a great pathway for manipulation. I think we, you know, we have uncovered this very exciting uh, potential mechanism, or not potential, but it's a mechanism for making these cells uh, de-differentiate and proliferate, cells which were thought to be uh, terminally differentiated. Mm -hmm. And it's also been, you know, it's also, there's some other research now, the hair cells of the inner ear, hmm. likewise, um, as well as retina. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also maybe, you know, the hippo pathway is also involved in, 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 in those tissues. Um, the mechanisms are not exactly the same. They're a little bit different, but uh, nonetheless, it's still there. And if you inactivate hippo in those contexts, that you can make a, a mammalian retina yeah. regenerate. Wow. So I think, you know, that this opens the door to a lot of new potential therapies for these, you know, for blindness and, uh, you know, and deafness. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That's spectacular. So a yeah. lot of potential regenerative medicine applications of yeah. manipulating this pathway. So you're just at the very beginning. It's the beginning, um, yeah. So um, uh, in that regard, uh, I think the FDA is probably going to be most concerned about safety. Um, what are the safety concerns about um, 
uh, you know, activating this pathway, activating YAP? I think, you know, I think the ones we hear the most are, you know, is it, are you going to get too much cardiomyocyte proliferation? Mm -hmm. Pretty sure that that's not the case. We've, you know, we've looked carefully at that. We look, continue to look at that. Um, Abnormal proliferation, of course, plays a role in other cardiovascular disease too, like myoentomal hyperplasia, sure, atherosclerosis, yeah. right, right. And, and these patients that we're, you're going to be treating, uh, potentially, mm -hmm. hopefully, um, with your um, activator of, of uh, YAP, your inactivator, I guess, of the hippo pathway. Correct, yeah. Um, you know, you, you could be stimulating proliferation um, that could contribute to cardiovascular disease, atherosclerosis and myelintomal hyperplasia, restenosis. Mm -hmm. What are your concerns there? Uh, you know, I think that that is a concern. We did do a small study with uh, my collaborator at, uh, uh, at Texas Heart, Rich Dixon, um, looking at peripheral arterial disease or mm -hmm. peripheral vascular disease, that mm -hmm. model. Yeah. And we actually were able to show that, uh, much like in the heart, if you have a mouse model, it's a ligation model, um, mm -hmm. but you, if you inject the virus into this, uh, the muscle that you can get more uh, microvasculature. Mm -hmm. So um, I think actually, yeah, I, I, I think that that actually is, is another area that we're, we're, gonna, we're interested in looking into. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, what, what you said earlier about uh, local delivery, uh, you know, you were using in the pig, you were using the Noga catheter to, mm -hmm. to deliver the um, Adno, uh, AAV locally, and that, that should also, I would think, reduce oh, yeah. off-target effects. Orders of magnitude less than yeah. in terms of doses as, as compared to going systemically. I see, yeah, yeah, yeah that makes a lot of sense. Right. You know, um, so you're using AAV to, to deliver your um, hippo inhibitor. What, tell us what, again what it is, it's it, the, the, the hippo antagonist? Uh, antagonist. It's, a, it's a RNA interference. Okay, so it's RNA, RNA, RNA interference, interference correct, yeah. and, uh, and blocking uh, Salvador, Salvador. a molecule called Salvador. Salvador, yeah. Salvador, yeah. Um, is, there, is, is there any way that you could um, uh, use a gain of function to achieve the same effect? We have done that in mice. Um, you know, with gain of function, you run, yes, the answer is yes, simply the answer is yes. I mean, mm -hmm. if you have the right molecule, uh, yeah. and we're trying, we're looking at that, we have many different, many different molecules that we're looking, looking at. I guess the, sort of the downside of that is you, you run the risk of losing some endogenous regulation, mm -hmm. which is what I like about this RNA interference. Mm -hmm. There's quite a bit of the, of the endogenous regulation left mm -hmm. intact. So when the, you know, as the defect fills in, the hippo pathway kicks back up again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, and, and so as, sure. you know, as the defect fills in, you kind of, you, you, you turn the, the the right. effect of the gene therapy gets shut down. So it's a transient effect of the interference Based therapy. on the biology, uh, right. Uh, yeah. And um, but another, another approach, the reason I brought this up is because you, you, you know that we're working with the RNA. We have a center for RNA Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. We've thought a lot about RNA. And, yeah, um, absolutely. You know, if, if you're thinking along those lines, we'd be happy to help you. And, sure, uh, yeah, I appreciate that. So uh, just to, t you know. If, if that, uh, if that yeah, I think is something you, know, you want to do, I think please. they're very interesting, right? And yeah. you know, and, uh, you know, nanoparticles delivery. Mm -hmm. I think there's a huge amount of work being done on that throughout the country. Certainly, right. You know, even in the world, a lot of people looking at those things. So yeah, yeah I think that, yeah, I think that those technologies are very interesting. Yep. Well, we're coming to the end of our time, uh, and uh, as I see, uh, no other questions uh, coming up. Uh, Dr. Martin, I'd like to thank you for being on the show tonight. Uh, we uh, you, learned Dr. an Cook. awful lot from you today, and I really hope you're successful. We need a new th a therapeutic approach to heart failure, and uh, this one looks very, very promising. So we learned tonight about the HIPPO pathway and uh, about regeneration of the heart. Uh, my guest uh, tonight uh, gave us a, a great education. Uh, Dr. James Martin, thank you again. Uh, for a wonderful uh, presentation and uh, best of luck in your work. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Great job. Thanks, John.